three main regions of the brain. Largest area of the brain is the cerebrum. The cerebrum. <clears throat> and in addition to the cerebrum, we also have the cerebellum. Okay, cerebellum means little brain in Latin. And the brain stem. This is the brain stem here. On the outer portion of the brain, we have these uh, sulci and gyri, which are the hills and valleys of the brain. <clears throat> they lie um, superficially and the this superficial portion of the brain that has the sulci and gyri is called the cerebral vortex. The cerebral vortex. So the general term for all of these kind of uh, hilled regions are gyri. Gyri. So gyri is plural and if I'm just talking about one particular um, I would say Gyrus. So gyrus is singular. And I also have these uh, grooves that lie between each of these hills in the cerebral cortex. And these are the sulci. The sulci. And if I'm just talking about one sulci in particular, then I would say sulcus. And remember in anatomy, we are always talking about a p person in anatomical position. And rem remember the right is going to be the right side of the patient, not the right side of you as the observer as you are looking at something. Okay, so the cerebrum is separated into the right and left hemisphere. Okay, the right and left hemisphere. So the right hemisphere has our creativity, our music, our art. The left brain um, here is known for language, um, mathematical reasoning and logical reasoning, uh, left brain function. And the right and left hemispheres communicate to one another through a structure that lies uh, deep in here, which I'll show you when we open this up, called the corpus callosum. So the corpus callosum connects the two hemispheres together to allow the two hemispheres to communicate to one another. Okay? Deep grooves are called fissures. Fissures. So the we have the great longitudinal fissure, which separates the right hemisphere from the left hemisphere the great longitudinal fissure. We have another fissure that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum, and this is the transverse fissure, the transverse fissure. And this is called the central sulcus, the central sulcus. Now the central sulcus is going to separate the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. So we have four lobes of the brain and they are separated um, according to functionality. So in the human brain, the human brain has a lot of its area taken up by the frontal lobe. Now the frontal lobe has to do with planning, with understanding consequences of one's actions, um, um, being able to predict outcomes, and much of our personality as well is found here in the frontal lobe. From here to here, this is still frontal lobe, so this is the central sulcus, central sulcus, frontal lobe. From here, going back a little ways, we've got our parietal lobe parietal lobe. Here we have sensory processing, our, our uh, sense of spatial awareness, our internal GPS. Okay, here in the in this region we have our occipital lobe, the occipital lobe. So the occipital lobe is for visual information processing. So laterally here we have the temporal lobes, temporal lobe. Um, but one of the things that it does is auditory information processing. Auditory information processing. Here we have the central sulcus, the central sulcus, and sitting anteriorly, this gyri, this gyrus here is the is the precentral gyrus. The precentral gyrus, also called the primary motor cortex. Primary motor cortex. Now on the other side of the central sulcus, we have the post central gyrus. 
the post-central gyrus. Okay. The post-central gyrus is known as the primary somatosensory cortex. So tactile sensory information is going to be processed in this area. So the primary somatosensory cortex. Okay, so when we look at the mid-sagittal view of the brain, and let's uh, identify some of these uh, structures here. Um, the most noticeable thing, uh, structure that you'll see here, is the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum, which connects the right and left cerebral hemispheres and allows for those two hemispheres of the brain to communicate to one another. This structure here is the fornix, the fornix, and here is the location of the lateral ventricles, which is uh, separated by the uh, septum pellucidum. So the lateral ventricles would uh, be in this area. They're sep uh, separated by this small membrane there. This structure here is actually the choroid plexus of the third ventricle. And the fourth ventricle is, oops, the fourth ventricle is right here. And the uh, fourth ventricle is going to continue up in this direction to form the cerebral aqueduct. The cerebral aqueduct. Number 19 here, uh, this is the thalamus. The thalamus. Down here is the hypothalamus. Number 21 in this model. 21 in this model. So thalamus, hypothalamus. Of course, this is the mid-sagittal view of the cerebellum, which shows these branch-like structures, which is the arbor vitae of the cerebellum. The arbor vitae of the cerebellum. Here's some uh, midbrain structures here. This is a mammillary body, a mammillary body. This structure here is the pituitary gland the pituitary gland, where I have this bump here. This is the pons. So that's the pons. This would be the medulla oblongata, the medulla oblongata. So looking at the inferior view of the brain. So here is cranial nerve number one. This is the olfactory nerve, okay, which processes your sense of smell. And just here in the front is the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb. Here is the pituitary gland again. Cranial nerve two is the optic nerve. So here we see part of the optic nerve, or one of the optic nerves from one side of the body, an optic nerve from the other side of the body. and. If you look closely, you'll see that these are going to form an X, okay? So the point at which um, the uh, optic nerves cross is called the optic chiasm, the optic chiasm. Now, when this is together, then I can see that these uh, mammillary bodies, these are the mammillary bodies, are nice and side by side in this view. This kind of bulbous region here is the pons, the pons. And here we have the medulla oblongata, the medulla oblongata. And another structure that I want you to know is the, um, the pineal gland or pineal gland, which is right here, it's really small. Number 23, the pineal gland. 